Welcome everybody to the Falcon one shot on the agenda. We have the bottom of the well here today This right here is a game that cropped up on Steam for me I want to say sometime last week as a free game So just a bit of a heads up for all of you guys. It is indeed a free game So you could definitely download it for yourself no paying, no nothing like that. Just check it out and have a good time with it. Um, what is the bottom of the well, though, Falcon? Very good question. This right here is actually a really, really fun free game. Normally, when it comes to, like, free games on Steam, I look at them, I'm thinking, eh, you know, probably not even worth checking out. But I gave this one a chance under the guise that it is a survival... Not, well, not really a survival, but it's more of a post-apocalyptic visual novelish type of game, it's very much akin to something like 60 Seconds. Now, whereas 60 Seconds has more of that cartoony, like, goofy type of feel, this is more of a gritty, surreal type of experience. But it plays out very similar in the fact that you have a character. When you start off your run, you pick up certain items to survive the post-apocalypse, and then based on the items you select, you'll be able to use them for certain events, and then certain events will probably give you more items or either give you more items, give you positive events, or probably bring your demise overall. Uh, welcome to the bottom of the well. This game is a visual novel, meaning it is mainly text-based piece of interactive fiction, a book where you get to decide what happens next. Most of the gameplay consists of picking your choices from a selection of options, which um, will further the story. Again, very much like 60 seconds in that regard. Bottom of the well does have some gameplay aside from multiple choices, though. The most important of which is the kind of Alice, our protagonist, you are going to play. For your first playthrough, we recommend you use default Alice, but the customization is there to be used. Alright. Even if you complete the game, a very different Alice might have a very different experience. If nothing else, you might just find a new way to die. Thank you for playing our game, Red Nettle Studio. Gotcha. So, much as the game over here mentioned, we'll be going with the recommended default Alice over here. So, let's see. The default Alice is capable of finishing the game to its true ending, but not necessarily through all branches. I, I wasn't done reading that game. <laughs> Can I go back and finish that, please? Uh, yes. This Alice is career-motivated, friendly, somewhat lazy, a hopeless romantic with no sur- What, are you busting my balls now? With no survival skills at all, she makes up for it by being a good organizer. Okay, so... As you can see over here, um, assuming you don't want to take this over here, you can reset all of these points and then spread them out to your liking. Uh, this one's going to have no survival um, skills and no fitness skills at all. Uh, pretty decent social life, pretty decent dating life. Career oriented, as you can see, and then to supplies with two. Supplies of Omride does allow you to bring more items with your um, little adventure over here, so there is that. Uh, Dream Diary. Today I had the weirdest dream of my life. I'm waiting for Joe to come online so I can talk to someone about this. God, I feel like I'm going crazy. Morning, eh? morning. Okay. Did you catch the anniversary reading last night? No. Well, I tried, but I fell asleep. Listen, about that. You fell asleep? Oh, come on. Alice in Wonderland is like our favorite. Let me finish. Something happened. I was tuning in on my radio. You're such a Luddite. Amazing I can even catch you online. Shut up. I'm not a Luddite. I just like analog things. Anyway, I was tuning into the broadcast and... I must have hit the AM switch or something because I suddenly... Because suddenly the channel changed to something else. What? Aliens? Uh-oh, government-run number stations? No, it was this weird, like, white noise at first. It's hard to explain why I was so drawn to it. I could hear snippets of some melody. Maybe lyrics, but the signal was weak. So you turned it off and continued looking for the Alice broadcast. There's a really... So, her, her character's name is Alice, and this guy obviously looks like the fucking... Mad Hatter over here. There's a Alice in Wonderland mention over here, too. Huh, I wonder if that has something to play with the overall story. You have... Oh, okay, that would make sense about all the, um, the spades and the diamonds and the hearts and the rabbits. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm very slow, apparently. Uh, so I went out of my balcony and turned the antenna around until the signal came through clear. It now sounded more like music, with the odd signal in the background. When logic and proportion have fallen sloppy dead, and the white knight is talking backwards, and the red queen's off with her head. Oh, so somebody's pirate radio broadcast of the golden oldies? It felt like there was something else there, some message that the music was hiding. I know it sounds weird, and then I fell asleep. What a story. No, hear me out. I dreamed. And I didn't know I was dreaming. Do you understand? It was entirely lucid, but like, like waking up in another world, except I didn't think it was another world. Ugh, does this make any sense? You had a super lifelike dream, where you didn't know you were dreaming, but you were still lucid in control? Sounds pretty rad to me. I'm sure it would have been, except for the whole end of the world apocalypse bit in the dream. Okay, now you've got my attention. 
So like I said, it was the end of the world. Everything I did that day felt like the real thing. Every smell, every sound, every color, every touch. It's important you know that. I wasn't acting like I would in a dream. I didn't know it was a dream. Heavy. There was no warning, no build-up, nothing. Just between one moment and the next, the TV had turned to the emergency alert system and this voice that sounded like it had been recorded in the 60s told us we were under attack. Were you alone? Yeah, I had a really long day at the office, so I had sworn off all social contact for the evening. I had the TV on in the background, just this noise. Wait, what? The office? You mean you've got some kind of real adult person job in this dream of yours? Yeah, actually. At the college. Student admissions office. Hey! Don't sound so surprised, I am going to graduate in a few months, you know. Uh-huh. With a BA in English Lit. Shut up. Such skills with words. Anyway, what happened next? Like I said, the TV suddenly turned to the emergency alert system. Jacked the volume all the way up, too. I didn't even know that they, would, they could do that. The broadcast told us we were under attack, right now, and that we needed to get to the shelter. That we had less than 30 minutes before the bombs hit. Jesus, sounds scary. At first, I didn't want to believe it. I switched the channel, but they were all the same. And when the sirens started, tornado sirens, flood sirens, I don't know. And I knew things were serious. So what you do? And here we come to our very first option. So as I mentioned, it's very similar to 60 seconds when, you know, it gets going. But the game does start off with giving you a little bit of background and story to what led up to the event. So it doesn't just toss you in there and be like, hey, there you go, good luck. So I really like that idea of it. Um, I went online to find out what was going on. I immediately tried to call it chess. Is this another reference to um, Alice in Wonderland? I feel like that's the chess I cat or something. We have the Mad Hatter here, we have Alice. I need to think about my options, so how about we go... Sure, let's see if we call this guy. Chess, who's that? My, um, boyfriend. I mean, I don't have a boyfriend, but in my dream I did. Wait up, tell me more about this sudden new boyfriend of yours. I thought you weren't in a dating scene. Actually, I've been thinking about putting myself out there, like, maybe some online dating or something. Although I'm kind of afraid to check OkCupid right now. What if there's a guy there named Chess? <laughs> Good icebreaker. Hi, I'm Alice. I dreamed about you last night. You were my end-of-the-world buddy funny. Aren't I just? You were saying about chess, what kind of name is that anyway? I wasn't really, I mean, yeah, he was pretty hot, I guess, and smart, and into me. What more could you ask for? I can sense you blushing all the way over here. Maybe I should check my OkCupid profile, actually. So what did your boyfriend think? Well, first I tried calling him, but all I got was a pre-recorded network busy message. But the net still works, so I hit him up there. I mean, we did most of our communication and chat anyway. And... And I found him, but there was no time for, well, anything. I started typing, you know. Holy hell, what the fuck is going on? Style stuff, and he just tearsly replied he had to go. That's a little blunt. He told me he needed to go to get his sister. His sister? How come? He'd mentioned her a few times. She's disabled, but lives in a house by herself, out somewhere in the burrows. Did he ask you to come too? He didn't ask. I did. I'm going to be outside my apartment in five minutes, he said, then logged off. I guess that's an invitation of sorts, so what'd you do? Well, I knew that Chess wasn't going to wait for me. If I wanted to go with him, I had to go right away. Just grab my stuff and go. Making quick decisions in the spur of the moment. Doesn't sound like you, so what'd you do? I so, let's see, uh, I went online to find out, we already know that one. So, again, this is going to be like a branching pad. I, I'll, I'll admit right now that I checked out at least this far off camera, and... I didn't go with the chest option that time, so I took off by myself. So with this one, apparently I am going with chest though, so I went with chest to help him out with his sister. Let's go with that one. So I decided to go with chest. I mean, how couldn't I? He clearly needed help. Altruistic. How long have you been dating? Cynic. Long enough to know my feelings were real. I mean, they felt real in my dream. Where did the sister live again? In the borough. Practically the suburbs. So pretty far. Chess said he usually takes a subway or a bus. Chess actually lived just down the street, and we always had a customary place to meet. We didn't even need to confirm that place anymore, but it didn't seem very likely we would be able to catch the bus or the subway. So, how were you planning on getting to the sister? In less than 30 minutes? Oh, spoiler. The bombs didn't start dropping on us within 30 minutes. It took longer than that. They did start, though. That's lucky. Yeah, well, it didn't mean we weren't in a hurry. But you didn't leave empty-handed, though, right? Oh, right, yes. I grabbed the biggest bag I had. A backpack. People always called it magic. You could fit so much into it. Bigger on the inside and all that. And here we get to choose our, you know, items that we're taking on the little adventure. So, um, we obviously have to take the flashlight and the map, thankfully. So you do get those for free. Um, is it, where's my map at? Oh, it's down here already? Okay, good. So, we have the flashlight, we have the map, and now we could shove at least maybe two items in there, maybe three. Um, so what should we take over here with this one? Um, I say we take some food, obviously. So we'll take some food here. Oh, my map just showed up finally, huh? 
So I'll take some food. And we have a sleeping bag. We have some spare clothing. We have a radio. I think we take the radio as well, right? So we can figure out what's happening. Oh, I have another spot. So how about we take two food and a radio? Or should we take some spare clothing or the sleeping bag? Hmm. A sleeping bag, huh? <laughs> you know what, man? It's a post-apocalypse. You sleep wherever the fuck you can sleep. Sleeping bag or not. So I'm going to say we take two food and a radio for this one and see what happens. So let's go ahead and exit inventory. Go on. Burrow, sister, bombs incoming. How did you plan to get there into chaos? The chaos. Yeah. The streets were nuts. Everything and everyone was going crazy. Crashes everywhere, but no one was responding. The street was completely gridlocked. I'm talking about maybe 15 minutes after the first announcement here. All it takes is a few cars in the wrong place. But you live pretty centrally, right? It had to be better further out. Did Chess have a car? No, but if we wanted a car, there were tons around. People just left them keys in the ignition and ran. Holy shit. It really must have been Bedlam. It was. I was so scared. So, steal a car or walk. We discussed walking. It was like 14 miles or something. It'd probably take at least 4 or 5 hours in a good day, and this wasn't a good day. Maybe a good start, though. Things might clear up outside the downtown area, and you might be able to steal a car there. Appropriate, a car? Stealing sounds so criminal. Heh, <laughs> whatever you say. Any other options except stealing? Appropriating a car and hoofing it? Something in between. I know a guy with a motorcycle. He really loves that motorcycle, but... I wondered if maybe he'd be willing to borrow it. I mean, for fuck's sake, we were going to go rescue a disabled woman. You know him well? Reasonably. I didn't know you were... I didn't know you knew how to drive a motorcycle. I'm a woman of many talents. So what did you do? Okay. We decided to try... Uh, now we have another option. I should note right now, right off the bat, this is completely different than my first run off camera. I went alone and I ended up in, the, in some sort of shelter. It was kind of like a strip joint or something and I had to, like, you know tell a woman or give a woman food to let me in, so this is now completely different, so I'm really liking the difference here so far. Uh, we decided to appropriate a car, we decided to walk out of the worst chaos, and we decided to try the acquaintance with the motorcycle. Alrighty, let's um, go with... Maybe I like the idea of walking out of the chaos and then trying to get a car later, you know? So let's go with that one. I decided walking was the best option. The whole downtown area was gridlocked, cars everywhere, people running down the sidewalks and the sirens blaring. It was like one of those disaster movies. No hope of driving anywhere at any rate. But where was everyone going? Most of them were going home, I think. People were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And there you were, running away from home. Once I made my decision, I stuck to it, no matter how much I was filled with doubt. Half an hour, half an hour was nothing, nothing at all. But luckily, that estimate was completely wrong. Sometimes I'll walk half an hour in the wrong direction, just because I stubbornly refuse to believe I'm lost. I didn't know that was the right direction, but I did try to get there as fast as possible, although that was a lot harder than I thought it would be. I was swept under a mass of people and manhandled in the wrong direction more than once. Every few minutes I stopped to consult the map to make sure I was going in the right direction. Was there any danger? Like, people attacking each other or something? No, I thought we were all going in the same direction, but then I realized the crowd was heading somewhere I hadn't planned to go. A subway station. What did you do? I was swept along. It was that or get trampled or pinned against some wall. I finally managed to dis disentangle myself at the stalled mass of people just outside the entrance. Apparently it was close and people were trying to break through the gates. By the time I was out though, I had lost all of time. A lot of time. Time. Yes. Isn't that thing you're fighting for here? How far were you planning on getting? Well, a lot further than I hadn't gone at that point. I could practically still see my apartment building. But the crowd was slowly thinning at least, and I actually saw a vehicle in motion. An ambulance. Weaving between stalled cars with its sirens blaring. What did you do? Alrighty. Um, what I had planned to do, find, the, find an appropriate car. I kept walking, although I started looking for shelter. I kept walking, intending to get away from danger before I had to stop walking. Alright. Well, apparently we've moved somewhere out of the chaos. Let's see about trying to get that car now, right? So how about we go with um, the first one? I'm still not sure you're ethically justifying this to yourself. I was scared out of my wits, and it seemed like a good idea at the time. Fair enough. So how did you go about it? I, um, kind of just jumped into the first open door I found. Of course, there was no key, because the driver still had it. He had just been on the other side of the car, seeing me sitting there. He had a minor apoplectic fit and ran at me, keys in hand. God damn it, Alice. I knew you weren't car thief material. I panicked when I saw him coming and went for the door. He saw me do it and tried to stop me, but in my squarely state, I managed to close it in his face and then immediately lock it. Of course, he did have the key, but I managed to crawl out of the passenger door before he got through the other door open again. 
<laughs> lucky, lucky. Hey, it was my first attempt at card theft, even if it didn't go very well. I'm assuming you stopped after this. I skulked around for a bit longer, but I didn't dare try another car. The next guy might have a gun in his hand, not the key, so I finally decided to stop wasting time and started walking. Shouldn't you be finding some kind of shelter? Ah. Now, I'm not sure if you're noticing, but time over here is indeed going forward as we do some more of these choices, so I'm not sure how that's going to play out. We have our map over here. Okay, that's actually pretty interesting. These are my choices. Here is our food. Okay, interesting. Um, yes, I was actively looking for, while walking, or no, I still hope I could get far enough away to be out of danger. Let's actually start looking for this shelter, perhaps. I found myself looking over my shoulder all the time, as if the flash could come at any time. Aren't you supposed to look away from the flash? Well, yeah, but how could I not? Some warning something. The sirens were pointless. Weren't they supposed to warn when the event is imminent? Now, I'd been out for at least an hour and no bombs yet. I think I would have stayed at home or done just about anything but head out into the open. You do that when you have this dream. I did what I did. So how long did you ask? Uh, did you risk staying out? I asked Chess what he thought, and he just shook his head. He was going to keep going. Uh, I couldn't risk it. I demanded we stop and look for shelter. I followed Chess. Let's... Yeah, I'm gonna demand for shelter, dog. So, what'd you find? I kept checking my map. When I saw the subway sign, I knew I was going into the right direction. I kept feeling like the bomb would fall on my head at any moment. When Chess saw that, he immediately told me to stop. I tried to argue with him that we had to find shelter, but he wouldn't have any of it. He said I should go, but he was going to keep going, that we were already wasting time. Nothing I could say could persuade him otherwise. Just like that? He said to come look for him after it was all over, although I had my doubts. Anyway, I had other, more immediate things to worry about. I was probably not very safe though, I mean, it must have been packed. Oh yeah! And I got closer, I did something that made my heart surge. Policemen. Actual government workers, they were ushering everyone down below, and people were actually moving in a somewhat orderly fashion. Is your subway station uh, system bomb-proof? I have no idea. I was caught in a stream of people either way and found myself shepherded below ground. It smelled of pee and vomit and body odor and the crying and shouting made talking impossible. Oh, we have a little bit of change of scenery now. And the music's gone too. So, a regular Friday night at the underground. Funny. Anyway, there was actually a semblance of order down there. Policemen were giving people places to sleep, also down on the tracks. And you ended up on the tracks with nothing but the clothes on my back, pretty much. I just pulled my knees up to my chest and held my head down and waited for the end. Oh, that's I guess probably a sleeping bag would have helped out over here. At least you weren't alone, and it had to be safer underground, right? I didn't feel safe, not at all. Someone could have knocked me out. Hell, someone could have probably had shanked me down there, and no one would have noticed. I was almost more frightened of the other people than I was of the bombs. The bombs were just abstract threats while all these panicking people were right there. What? No coming together of people? No great communion in the face of danger? Every man for himself. Anyway, apocalypse. So it was real. I mean, it was in a dream. Yeah. The first one was the worst because the light went outwitted. I tried to make myself as small as I could, but I still got kicked once or twice by people running by in a panic. A few moments later, there were flashlights out, police shouting, telling everyone to be calm. Be calm? Bullshit. The lights were out of it, and it was completely, utterly pitch dark. So the bombs started dropping finally. Oh my god, that means um, our boy Chess probably died. The first one? There were more. I lost count. With every blast, there was this terrible sound from the roof, like it was crying out. Small pieces had rained down with every rumble, and we all responded to its cry. Jesus Christ. Did the roof hold? It groaned. Rocks tumbled down, someone got hit by one big enough to hurt, and they cried out. I don't think the station was very far underground at all, and it hadn't been designed with bombings in mind. That must have been a pretty harrowing. Not just for me. A lot of people got up and said they weren't going to stay. There was a surge of people. Panic was mounting again. It was quiet outside, but the policemen didn't want anyone leaving yet. There was a lot of screaming, some demanding to be let out. I had to stand up to avoid getting jostled or trampled again. What did you do? That's when the final bomb hit. Close. Maybe I had been shot out, of course. Maybe. Who knows? I was looking towards the exit when it hit, and I could see the firestorm sweep down into it, engulfing the hapless policemen and anyone who had been pushing against them to come out. Everyone screamed, but it was drowned out by the sound of the roof beginning to fall. Dust covered everything. Holy shit. What did you do? 
after I finished coughing, something was burning so I could actually see. Although I didn't particularly want to. What I saw was the most... What I saw was that most were either huddling down, praying to whatever god they had that they wouldn't be buried alive, or then trying to escape. No one could get past the burning wreckage at the entrance, but the subway tunnels were wide open. Most were crowding into the tunnels, leading westwards, away from the downtown area. But it was a stampede. The tunnels leading east back from where I came were practically empty by comparison. I would get out of there if I were you, regardless of direction. Where'd you go? What is this over here? I'm not sure if you noticed this, but this face turned different after that one event just a while ago. Um, I didn't want to tangle with the crowd. I went east. I joined the crowd running west, of course. I just huddled down and joined the praying. <laughs> um, let's go away from the crowd and see if anything happens with that. I rushed into the east tunnel, heedless of what came behind me. As I ran, I heard the collapse of the subway station behind me and saw it as the light went out. Oh, shit. Good you got out of that one. Yeah. I had a flashlight, thank god. As I shone it around the tunnel, I realized that, to my amazement, I was the only one who ran into it. Maybe others had run into the parallel one, but I was alone here. I went back to the tunnel collapse, but it was just an insert mountable barrier of concrete and rebar. On the other side of which you might have been, well, I don't know if I was much better. What if all the stations had collapsed? What if I was trapped in this tunnel? And wasn't that a hell of a lot more likely the closer to ground zero you get? Fair point. The thing was, I knew this line. This was my line. And the next stop was my stop. So right back to zero. Pretty much. At least it was faster to walk underground than above ground. Had the station collapsed? Take a wild guess. Of course it had. That's not good. There was a similar pile blocking the entrance here, but I shone my flashlight all over it, climbing up as high as I could until I saw something amazing. The glint of metal. A train? Yep. It must have been in station when the bombs hit. I started digging. I mean, this took a long, long while, a full day at least, but in the end, I had unearthed the emergency exit at the back of the train car. And we just jumped a day right now, too. And you got that one open, too. With some effort, I had no shortage of blunt objects, though. When I stepped into it and realized it was sunlight, I was seeing further ahead, I could have cried. So you could get out. Yes, through one of the windows. I crawled through a short tunnel made out of debris, careful not to look at what else in the tunnel was made out of, and crawled up into. Well, pretty dim, pretty foreboding sunlight, but still sunlight. And what did it look like? Better than the tunnel, but not by much. The sky was dark. A rain of ash was coming down. The city was burning, scorched, ruined. A bit like me, probably, crawling out of that hole. Ooh, boy. That is indeed ash and burning. And with that, guys, we're going to wrap it up here. I just wanted to do a quick little Falcon one-shot on this. I think it went farther longer than I really expected, but there's a lot of text in this game, a lot of dialogue that I really wanted to read out. And as you can probably imagine, I keep going over here, but there is just a lot of text, so the video's getting really, really long as it is. But um, with this certain path that I took, there wasn't that much of a, at least yet, uh, a necessity for my items, but the other path that I took off camera required me to use like some food to bribe some individuals, and then if I didn't have the food, other outcomes came out of that one as well. So, um, you know, this is barely the tip of the iceberg. I'm pretty sure there's still a lot more story to go with this path over here, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Leave a thumbs up, leave a like to support us a lot. Description below will have the link if you want to check it out. Free game? No reason not to. Especially if you're into the whole visual novelish, um, you know, post-apocalyptic things as much as I am. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I will catch you next time.